Hi, welcome back, and today we're going to cover Zechariah chapter 2, Man with the Measuring Line. But before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us uh, instruction and, and righteousness, Lord. Thank you for giving us all the answers we need. Well, Lord, we know you know the end from the beginning, and we can see it clearly through your word. And I pray that you give us understanding now in chapter 2. Uh, just give us some nuggets to feed on, and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So we're probably going to go through this series quickly, a more, little more quickly than the others because the chapters aren't as long. When we get into chapter 5 and we start talking about the UFOs and we get later on in Zechariah, I think it's 10, 11, and 12, we, be, we begin to talk about the Antichrist. We may park there a little bit, but for some of these chapters, it's just going through it quickly. And even though it's quick, there's still some nuggets, some, some powerful things. Don't uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, despise not the day of small things. Don't, if, if it doesn't seem like it's important, it's just a small portion, don't ignore it. Because sometimes God holds the biggest, most powerful truths in just a small portion. And that's how God works. It's He works mysterious ways. Well, now we're in Zechariah chapter 2. And uh, this, this chapter only has 12 verses. And uh, we're going to keep going in this series. And it's, it's really, uh, there's so much to learn. Uh, Zechariah, he, uh, he, he talks about the man with the measuring line, and he's going to give us some heads up. He's given a heads up about things to look uh, at towards Jerusalem at the end of the tribulation. So this passage is full of millennial uh, uh, antidotes. But let's start out by reading chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, And I lifted up. Uh, lifted my eyes again and looked and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand and this is an angel and then he said I then said I whither goest thou and he said unto me to measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof and behold the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him and said unto him run speak speak to this uh, young man saying Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns Without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. So these angels are talking, and they're also called young men. So an angel, uh, according to scriptures, about a, a, the age of a 33 year old man, we get that because that was the age that Jesus was crucified at 33. So most of these. Angels are young men, and they uh, are, appear as 33-year-olds. Now, let's look at verses 1 through 2. Now, we see that he's told to lift it up. He says, then lift up mine eyes. And this, this phrase is mentioned five times in the book of Zechariah. It's, it's mentioned in chapter 1, verse 18. It's mentioned here in 2, verse 1. It's mentioned in 5, verse 1, and that's when he gets into the UFO. Uh, 5 verse 9 UFO and then chapter 6 verse 1 and so make note of that as we go through there when he s says he lift up his eyes he is he's given a heads up that there's some kind of a special revelation that he's supposed to pay attention to and he sees this man with the measuring line and uh, the what the, what he's measuring for is for the expansion of Jerusalem because he's talking about that he is supposed to measure it because and later he's explaining because it's going to be a town without walls and full of inhabitants and full of cattle full of uh, uh, prosperity because of the expansion of Jerusalem and so he was told to measure that they're getting ready to rebuild after the millennial reign or I'm sorry, after the tribulation period where the Antichrist came in and was trying to destroy Jerusalem. Now, uh, for this measuring, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. The Bible says, but we, bo we will boast not, uh, let me repeat that, but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. So this measure is going to, going to be something that will reach everyone listen to this uh about this measuring ephesians 3 verses 17 through 19 that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye uh, being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth the length the depth and height and to know the love of christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of god 
whatever this measure is, it's going to be something that everybody is going to experience and feel. And they're going to see, because of the measuring of this, because it's a specific measure that these angels are doing, that they're going to see how much love Jesus Christ has for his people. Now let's look at verse 3 about this angel, this angel that talked with him. Notice that this angel that is measuring goes out to meet this other angel. So these angels are having conversations. You know, they, you think that it, because of our limited knowledge and, and what we can perceive with the angels, which are just another, it's a, a, a being that looks like humans, but just in a different dimension. Well, they have conversations just like we have conversations. And, and they, it, but their conversation looks like it's based on the works of the Lord. They're always busy doing whatever uh, is for the Lord and for the benefit of the future kingdoms. Now, let's look at uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Got my notes kind of messed up here. Uh, he is told to run. Run. Why is he running? Because he's got some good news. You know, uh, Jesus is about to take the uh, bring back the glory that he took with him in heaven after his resurrection. He's going to bring it back to Jerusalem. And that's exciting. Remember the good news? Remember Mary, when she saw that Jesus rose from the grave, she ran and ran with the disciples because it's good news. So this, these angels are excited about Jesus putting the, his throne in Jerusalem on this earth. So they're excited, excited about the, the, the plans that's about to go on. About this glory, though, uh, John John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. When Jesus was among us uh, uh, during his earthly ministry, it says, We beheld his glory. This is John. He's saying, We beheld his glory, the glory as, a, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Remember, he saw the transfiguration with Peter and James. He saw his full glory. And he said it dwelt among us. And he knew that uh, he wasn't just some ordinary man. He was God in the flesh. And he, he dwelt among us and knew the, the value of that. Now let's look at Luke chapter 21, verse 27. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and glory. When Jesus Christ returns at the second advent. First of all, he's going to make an appearing to the Jews that are hiding in Selapetria. And some believe that there will be a post-tribulation rapture of the Jews toward the end. And they get that confused with the rapture of the body of Christ, which are two different events. But anyways, when they see his glory, it's not going to be just some average man. They will know, they will weep and wail and mourn for the thought of uh, being the ones that crucified and nailed him to a cross. They will see that he is their true Messiah and he's going to come with, with glory and great power when he comes back to the earth. Now... Acts 7, verse 55, is another verse on this glory. It says, And he, being full of the Holy Ghost, when Peter was stoned, remember, he, he was about ready to die, he says, He looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw the deity of Jesus Christ and the full power and glory before he died. And it's up in heaven right now. It was on the earth when Jesus Christ was here. It ascended with him up in the clouds. And it's, it's at the right hand of the Father, but it's coming back. It, this glory is coming back. Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. He's coming back with much power and much glory. And we, we need to be excited. If the angels are excited about that, we must be excited too. It's going to be a great, great time. Now notice also in verse 4 that this... That Jerusalem is made without walls. There's no, there's no reason for any security because Jesus is the king. Jesus will be ruling and reigning with a rod of iron. It would be, be a, a sad mistake to even think about crossing Jesus Christ during the millennial reign. But he's going to rule with justice. He's not going to be a, a judge that's bribed and, and a judge that can be bought and paid off. He is going to, he's going to judge righteously and holy. And it, so we don't need walls during the millennial reign. You can leave your door unlocked at night. As a matter of fact, the lion and, and the lamb that will lay down together. The, the kid can play on a, on a poisonous snake's a hole and not be bitten. You can leave your doors open, your windows at night, and not worry about anything happening. Now, Jeremiah 31, verses 27 through 28 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah, 
with the seed of man. So even during the millennial reign, the even we're part of the body of Christ will be ruling and reigning as the angels in heaven. Uh, but the, there will be people, there will be another age to come uh, full of Jews that will be uh, growing and there will be birth and life and uh, people be living to be up to a thousand years and if people don't live right maybe their life will be cut off to be a hundred years and they will think that if, if you don't live to be at least a hundred you're still a child according to millennial uh, uh, ages and it says that it shall come to pass that like as we have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. So the Lord is our, will be the watch. He'll be the true shepherd watching over without a wall. Also in verse 5, notice that he mentions a fire, a wall of fire round about. And that is a, that is a mention of, of the, the fire at the end of the millennial reign. Remember, Satan is loose for a little season. And uh, he gets, and I'll just read this passage, Revelation 20, verses 8 through 9. And, and shall go out to deceive the nation, Satan, which are in the four quarters of the earth. This is at the end of the millennial reign, at the end of the thousand years. Gog and Magog to gather them to battle, the number of whom is, is as the sand of sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the saints about Jerusalem. And that beloved city, which is Jerusalem, without a wall. So they come in without, without any any hindrances and guess what jesus said he the the bible says in zechariah 2 for verse 5 that there will be a wall of fire round about we'll read this and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them uh that you talk about instant security and instant justice and you know they like to say karma but it's just sowing and reaping it's sowing and reaping they come in and there's a fire instantly the rod of god comes down and burns them up now, also uh, about this fire, let's look at Ezekiel one twenty seven. And Ezekiel saw this. He saw this fire. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about uh, within it, from the appearance of the loins even upward, from the appearance of his loins even downward, as, as it were the appearance of fire. And it had a brightness round about it. Ezekiel saw his glory. He saw this fiery protection that will protect uh, especially Jerusalem at this last, the very last battle of, of eternity. Now let's look at verses uh, 6 through 9 now, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds, as uh, four winds of the, I'm sorry, as the four winds of the heavens, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the, with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he hath touched you, for you are the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that I am the Lord of hosts, or shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. It's interesting. He uses the word "ho ho" and from the land of the Lord, land of the north. And obviously, you think of Santa Claus, "ho ho" at the North Pole. And you know, the devil's a great imitator, and so he's he's always got whatever God has, the devil has it imitated and copied. And this could also be a reference to the tribes, the northern tribes, uh, uh, during the the period of. Uh, uh, the captivity, Babylonian captivity, it could be a reference for the for that, the northern tribes of Israel coming to escape. But it also could be a picture of the returning Jews at the end of the tribulation for the millennia, so ho, um, from the land of the north. For that, uh, I got two references. Isaiah 43, verses 5 through 6. The Bible says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Wherever they're hiding, they're going to be coming to live in Jerusalem, land of Israel. Isaiah 49, verses 12 through 13. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinan. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing. 
This is the millennial. O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. So there's a millennial passage in that. Now, let's look at verse 7. Let's kind of dig into that. This is a warning. This is a warning to the Jews in the tribulation and a warning to the church because it says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughters of Babylon. You can't help but notice the same passage in Revelation 18, verses 2 through 5, which says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird that's just full of demons. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Here it is. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partake of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So, there's a warning to get out of Babylon. Now, verse 8, in the millennial, uh, talks about the apple of his eye. In the millennial, uh, they, Israel will be the apple of God's eye again. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 10, He found him in a desert land, in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept them as the apple of his eye. Uh, the apple of his eye is an expression for, that's, the only thing God sees, the only thing he's concerned about, Lamentations 2.18. It says, they, Their heart cried unto the Lord, the wall of daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eyes cease. That was a prayer that God wouldn't forget that he that one time Israel was the apple of his eye. Psalm 17 verse 8. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. And again, during the millennial reign, Israel will be the apple of his eye. Now let's look at verse 9. Uh, it says, Behold, I will make my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil uh, to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. You know what the spoil is? The spoil is the nations. This will be the nations given to Israel during the millennial reign. For that I have Isaiah 60, verses 10 through 12. And it says, And the and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote them, but in my favor I have mercy on thee. Back to the apple of his eye. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall utterly be wasted. So they will be, like he said, he said that they will be flayed. They'll be, uh, he'll put his hand upon them. Now, for, let me see where I'm at. Okay, verses 10 through 13. Verses 10 through 13. The Bible says, sing and rejoice. This is uh, back to Zechariah chapter 2, verses 10 through 13. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I am come, I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. Notice, even other nations are going to be his people. He says, I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent unto me, and the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. God's not done with Israel. And it's interesting that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel again. God's, re God's getting ready. It says, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he hath raised up out of his holy habitation. Now let's get some nuggets out of this portion of Scripture. Verse 10. Verse 10 is a, a great promise of the return of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 9, verse 14, That I may show forth all thy praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 says, The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. No more evil. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. 
The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with, with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The apple of his eye. The Lord is in the midst of Israel. The nations, any nation that doesn't come to Jesus during the millennial reign will be cut off. And God, the ones that do, will be considered his people. What a blessed thing to think about. Uh, no more UN, no more uh, no more New World Order, nothing like that. It'll be Jesus' is Christ's order, and it's either his way or, or not. And it's not like Jesus is, is going to rule unfairly. He's going to rule uh, with law and truth and grace and mercy. All of the... All of the things that this world's governments don't have and exhibit. Now, this uh, verse 11, it says, And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. And some will try to apply this uh, to the church age. But if you really if you really get down to it, you don't see nations joining unto the Lord. They don't even mention Jesus Christ in, in, in their writings. It's, it, in the UN, the name of Jesus Christ is taken out. So it's not, this can't be about the church age. This is speaking of the nations during the millennial reign. Look at Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it, all of them. Uh, and, and they're not doing that today. It says, And many shall go away. And say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. The UN's not teaching the ways of God. And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Not New York City, from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, Probably rebuking them for wanting to start wars all the time. That's it. No more wars when Jesus comes back. And there's spear, spears into pruning hooks. There, all these weapons, that, all these factories, and uh, the the military industrial complex will be gone. They'll be they'll be building uh, tools and how to build and repair and to plant gardens and to take care of themselves. It says, "Nation shall not lift up sword against nation; neither shall they learn." war anymore so there goes west point no more west point during the millennial reign now let's look at isaiah 11 verses 6 through 8 the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them and so you, everybody wants to do that now you see these people that are raising um, these exotic animals and then you read these horror stories where they turn on them and then they wonder why because they're wild animals, but during the millennial, I think the frequency has changed. The vibration level through uh, Jesus Christ's presence changes and lifts up this curse, and then all the animals act normal. They're no longer uh, exhibiting this wild, uh, self-defensive behavior. And so a little kid can take a lion and a, a, a wolf together and just play with them out in the field, and nothing will happen. It says, and the cow, and the cow, and the bear shall feed together. Uh, the bear's not going to be sitting there looking at the cow thinking that, oh, I want some prime rib. No, they are going to be eating, it looks like a vegetation diet. And their young ones shall lie down together. And they're perfect harmony with the animals. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. So the lions become a vegetation. Uh, they become a vegetarian, a vegetarian lion. Imagine during the millennial reign. That won't happen until Jesus Christ comes back. And it says, a little child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the wean child should put his hand on the cockatrice's den. I can't say that word properly, excuse me. Cock, cock, in the serpent's den. How's that? Anyways, uh, there'll be a kid out there playing in the field and sees a hole. And today, it's like you, your kids are outside, especially in South Florida. You don't know what's hiding under those rocks. You're like, please don't, don't be playing around. But during the millennial rain, they can stick their hand in there, even if there is a snake, poison snake, and nothing happens to them. Uh, Isaiah 19, verses 24 through 25. In that day, Israel shall be, Israel will be third in Egypt, uh, with Egypt and Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, 
Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Just perfect unity between countries that are typically enemies right now will be in perfect unity. Now let's close with uh, verses, well, verse 12. We read about the that the Lord will inherit Judah, and, and the portion of the Holy Land shall tr- choose Jerusalem again. Well, that's the Lord's inheritance. It's nothing for the UN to decide who it belongs to. It belongs to God. Psalm 27, verse 6, And now my hand be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises to the Lord in his, in his millennial inheritance. The Bible says in Matthew 5, verses 34 through 35, But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, Jesus Christ. That's his city. Now let's look at verse 13. It says, Be silent, O flesh. Now I think what... we First of all, we've been talking about the millennial city, Jerusalem, the man with the measuring line that's going out and getting this city ready for the return of Jesus Christ. But here, uh, we have a preview of... This was just a preview, and now uh, we have the actual show. In other words, it's uh, before the curtain call when you're at the movie theater watching, you see all these previews, and then then all of a sudden gets dark, and then the real movie happens. I think that's what happened when uh, Zachariah was told to lift up his eyes. He saw a preview before the actual second advent, because now the show's starting, and everybody gets quiet. So it says, be silent all flesh. Revelation 8, 1 says, And when he opened up the seventh seal before the return, before the second advent, there was silence in heaven and a space of a half an hour. So there's quiet. The show's about ready to start. And wait till we get through the rest of Zechariah. It gets really interesting. But before, before we go through the bad things, God has to give us some previews of the good things so you understand that there's a happy ending at the end. So I uh, hope that's been of interest. That's Zechariah 2. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Pray that you would bless this lesson, bless all those that watch this, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.